The obesity crisis in the United States is only getting worse. Close to one in three American teens are overweight or obese, and that number has only grown, becoming the number one health concern for parents in the United States. With typical interventions failing, many parents are left wondering how can they get their kids to eat healthier? And food companies aren't helping, as they continually create positive emotional associations with their junk foods. But Chicago Booth's Christopher Bryan and his co-authors may have some answers to that question. It seemed like all of these past interventions had been assuming that teenagers want to eat healthily. Um, and that seemed like pretty clearly a problematic assumption, and we thought it might be the main reason why people had not succeeded in the past in getting teenagers to change their eating habits. And another big challenge with any intervention with teenagers is that they tend to be rebellious. So as you would assume, teens don't typically want to do what their parents or any adult tell them to. People generally realize that teenagers uh, tend to be rebellious. What they appreciate less is that teenagers care a lot about social justice. So it's the first time in uh, uh, their lives that they sort of feel like agents in the world, people who can make a difference. They, uh, unlike many adults, don't feel jaded about their prospects for, for doing that. And the researchers realized they could take a teen's rebelliousness and sense of social justice and use that to their advantage. So they ran a randomized control study of 8th graders in rural Texas and designed the experiment in such a way that the teens didn't know that they were being tested. Each 8th grader received one of three different articles to read. One of them was our main treatment article uh, in which we taught them all about the ways in which the food industry uh, tries to deceive them and others into eating unhealthy food and the harm this does uh, and the ways in which uh, the companies become rich by doing it. We get it. You extend Juicy Drop Gum's delicious flavor with sour gel. What, no applause? And so we just, we just tell them the only language these companies understand is money. And so if you don't buy and eat their food, you're sending a message, you're taking a stand. It's both a symbolic and a material stand against this injustice. In the second article, it's a control article, we did our best to mimic the way nutrition education happens in schools nowadays. Research shows that most teens aren't getting enough servings of healthy items like fresh fruits and vegetables. And, uh, and so this was meant to represent sort of the current gold standard in, in uh, nutrition education in schools, in middle schools. And then the third article had nothing to do with food or nutrition at all. It was meant to be what we call essentially a no treatment control. The day after the students read the articles, the researchers were able to test the effects the articles had on them. The way we did that was by uh, working with the school principal uh, to slightly change the way he does something he does every year, which is give the students uh, a snack pack as a thank you for their hard work during state testing. So in order to make sure that the students didn't think this had anything to do with our study, we arranged for him to announce it to the students as he normally does long before they knew we were coming. Then the day after we came, uh, he went on the loudspeaker and said, okay, eighth grade class, today's the day, you're getting your, your snack pack as a thank you for your hard work during the state testing. Um, homeroom teachers are passing out these order forms, just choose what you want and we'll have it waiting for you at the end of the day. And thanks to that, the researchers were able to see if the teen snack choices varied based on which of the three articles they had read. So it turns out that the traditional approach to teaching about nutrition um, had no effect relative to just not talking about nutrition at all. And we found that the kids who had gotten the expose article the day before chose significantly fewer unhealthy options. So they were more willing to forego unhealthy options in their snack pack, uh, uh, more willing to give up uh, one of the unhealthy treats like Doritos or Oreos or chips in favor of something healthy like baby carrots or a fruit cup. If we were able to achieve sustained differences of that size, that would translate into uh, roughly one pound of body fat, either lost or not gained, every six weeks for boys and every eight weeks for, for girls of that age. The researchers conducted a second study to see how long the effects might last. After three months, the effects of the class were still apparent. The intervention successfully reduced eighth graders' positive feelings towards junk food and caused boys to reduce their daily purchases of unhealthy snacks and drinks in the school cafeteria by 31%. So if we really want to attack teen obesity, maybe our lessons need to change from this Bad food choices can lead to big health problems to this 
Would you like to try some samples? You guys want some samples? Do you have a favorite? What's your favorite? Good choice. We have spent millions upon millions of dollars finding ways to inject these with chemicals that trick your brain into thinking you just want to keep eating more and more. It's great. Just wait, you will be begging your parents to buy you more and more of these. Keep making us bundles of money. Have a good day. There's a reason why big food companies try to hide what's in their junk food. They carefully manipulate their products to keep us eating them. But as their profits grow, so do health problems, especially for little kids and others who don't know any better. Oh, no thanks. I don't touch this stuff. Uh, I've seen what it does to people.